How many of you know we serve a God of encounter? He's the God that loves to manifest a burning bush and his voice come out of it to raise up a deliverer for all of Israel. Blinding light out of heaven. Saul changed to Paul. Open heavens over Jesus. I mean, on and on and on. It's never like when you run in with God. Oh, that's nice. When you run in with God, it's never like, maybe that kind of happened. I'm not sure. I mean, not, not from biblical standards, although I love the maybes too. I just take it all. But um, it, was, it came from a dream, uh, these events. So I've been, anyway, most of you know who we are. But I tenor at speaker, you know, teaching and, and all this stuff. And, but a dream came um, to start doing these events like five a year. So every, every couple of months or so. And we're trying to hit that mark. It's a little hard. We're busy. But glory night. Really, uh, Chuck and Shay, hey, I want to announce them in a little bit. They're amazing. There's some heavyweights in here, too. Just want to, hopefully, we'll get a chance to... Uh, announce them as well and and if you guys have anything come grab the mic they're full of the holy ghost <laughs> start prophesying and everything but um you know to make pockets and windows to encounter god you know and so i'm kind of in this thing with you really like i'm just happen to have the microphone some of the time during it but i'm i'm right here with you that we just pray jesus show up and touch us is that okay yeah and uh so we've really seen him do that you know the bible says the letter alone kills but the spirit brings life and we want the fullness, you know. Sometimes you can get a little, get a little top heavy. Although we study to show ourselves approved. I've been to Bible college, graduated. Not that that does a whole lot, you know. How many of you know Jesus picked a few fishermen that didn't have a clue? <laughs> Thank God. I'm telling you, I went to Bible college. It was powerful, but I came out like, man, felt more disqualified than ever, you know. Thank God, it's just loving Jesus really well. And then he he lets the rest shake out how it does. And and uh, um. But anyway, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, we teach, we do schools. I mean, I'm all for it, trust me. But also, we need the body of Christ to be slammed full of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not coming off of it, not trying to be rude, but you just can't, man. I, I don't, if this thing isn't real, this whole book, then, you know what I mean, we can go ahead and walk to another ideology out there. But the only thing that sets us, what's Bronson, what's up? The only thing that sets us apart as a people is our God is alive. I was just in Israel. That, that tomb is slam empty. He's rose again, holes still in his hands to this day. Come on. And there was a big problem, though, because he ascended on high, sat at the right hand of God, and sent the Holy Ghost in fire that's now in the earth. Holy Ghost runs with us full. So we need a people, the bride, full of the Holy Spirit and power. You know, the gifts, all of it. I just want all of it. And I believe so does God. And it's okay if you're in here kind of like, I don't know. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> we're checking you out too. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, we, we love it all. It's all good. But, uh, but I'm just excited. So that's more or less what the, you know, we'll teach some and, and we, we go for it. But we're really making heavy pockets to encounter God. And we've seen some wild stuff happen. You know, how many of you know, you know, I've learned this and I'm always learning. You never arrive. But if you make room. For Jesus to show up, he loves to show up. A lot of times what's happening is we, we get in the way. And um, it's kind of like Revelation 3 where he says, you know, he comes to the Laodicean church and he, he says, Behold, Jesus Christ, I stand at the door and knock. We all know that verse. Have you ever known anybody to stand at a door very long and knock? If it isn't answered, they usually are going to leave pretty quick. This is the picture. He didn't say, I posted up a chair at the door and I'm hanging out knocking. You know what I'm saying? He's standing at a door and knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. Dine with him and he with me. Very intimate verse, but he does that, I've noticed, in meetings. He comes and all of a sudden you can feel it, man. If you spend time in the secret place, you'd be, a lot of times I think I have a polished sermon that's all that. He's like, nope, no good. I'm trying to knock and come in, you know, and I'll hear him knocking. And we want the Holy Spirit to come in. And um, sometimes if we make room, that's what these are really geared around. Uh, he'll come in healing in bodies. How many of you need uh, healing in your body or a miracle? Awesome. We've been seeing God just touch people. Um, Jody, hey, guys. Uh, we were just in Destin. A uh, lady's deaf, deafness in the ear pop open. Uh, who was in Destin? Uh, yep. You remember that right over to the right? I was actually talking to a man who came out of a stroke right here in front of us. Uh, again, if this thing's real or it's not, I want to encourage you guys. Let's just go for it. What, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Go for it. I want to encourage you. Yeah, like 
just grab, you know, the sick, whatever. I've had some nightmare stories. I'll share some tomorrow before we just go and, you know, love people in the streets. But be encouraged if, if you know, if there's anybody that could ever encourage you in witnessing and just being life. I could. I've had some utter failures on the streets. I mean, you'd laugh forever. So I'm talking to a guy. And I'm like, man, Jesus, I was telling him a miracle we saw in Brazil of a guy, brain damage, he, motorcycle accident, young man. And uh, how many of you know if you lose part of your brain, you now, and now his equilibrium was shot. He was, his mom said he was in depression, mid-20s, because he couldn't play soccer anymore. He couldn't even run, barely walk. And how many of you know if you miss, part of your brain gets taken out from a motorcycle accident. To heal that, you need a creative miracle. You need more brain. So I'm not like thinking, I'm not smart enough to know all that, so I don't really care anyway. And I'm just like, Jesus is real. Bible's real. Let's pray. So I'm fogo. We're in Brazil. It's Portuguese. Fogo. Fuego, Spanish. It's close enough. And we're, you know. And, uh, and so we're praying. And, and then the, the gift of faith came. Thank the Lord. It's, it's a gift that it's like when it comes, the impossible is like so possible. It's like it can't not happen. It really is. It's, it's only happened. It's not been a lot, but I love it when it does because it really helps. It's the gift of faith. It basically obliterates any doubt. It's a gift of faith, and when it comes, it dominates the whole atmosphere with faith. There is no doubt. I'll never forget we're in Columbia. I'm kind of going quick, and uh, there was a lady I had no idea. My friend knew because he saw her purse. I don't know anything about you women's purses, but... Apparently, she's a real rich lady, $6,000 purse. He's like, oh, yeah, that's a such and such or whatever. I didn't know. And she just so happened to be one of the ladies ridiculing our meeting, saying, oh, that's such super spiritual people, you know. But her daughter's convinced her to come. Unbeknownst to us, she couldn't stand or walk. Her knee was blown out. Got to her, could sense it, and get to faith came. I said, get up. Just like, Pe you know, Peter says, pick up your mat and walk. It's like, you don't understand, I can't walk. But there's a gift of faith by the Holy Spirit Corinthians, and uh, so I just told her, no, I said, watch this. I couldn't, this is not me at all. I don't do that. But my friend's like, no, no, you said, watch this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, did I really? I would never do that. And uh, so I'm like, that's definitely the Holy Spirit if you ever hear me say that. So I was like, uh, watch this. I was like, get up, uh, be healed, get up. And, and she gets up, she couldn't believe it. Her knees healed. She's totally, she was actually the lady persecuting the meetings and her, her daughter forced her to come. Still waiting on that donation, though, man. A rich lady. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm totally teasing. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> I'm like, bridalglory.com. <laughs> Donate button, top right. No, I'm totally teasing. Uh, so the young man, I'm sitting here, <laughs> praying over his knee, gift of faith comes, thank the Lord. Um, he, I said, start running. And, and everything in the natural was like, this dude is not healed. He starts running. He's about to fall over. He's up at the front. Everybody's watching. His mom's watching. And uh, it, it's pretty cool, though, when the anointing comes. But I want to encourage you, though, too. Sometimes, have you ever done this? I've done this a bunch. You pray, and you don't feel anything. Yeah, that's actually most often for me. So don't feel like you have to go into some Superman bubble or something. But it's awesome when it does. <clears throat> but it also, you don't go by feelings. You go by the Word of God. So... Uh, start running. He's, he's like, I can't. I'm like, no, <laughs> just, you know, and then all of a sudden it just clicks and he starts running in place and everybody's like, his mind hadn't kicked in yet, but his mom did a look over at her face. She's like, oh. and then he, it hits him. He starts weeping. He starts running up and down the church, totally healed, creative miracle, had the scar still there and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> So um, um, we're in Destin. You guys thought I forgot, but uh, I was talking to a guy front row, stroke about just r building faith. Right when I did that, my right ear starts flittering. Sometimes that's a word of knowledge, like deaf in and out, real, real fast. How many of you know, too, sometimes that which you draw your attention to in the spirit will elevate the anointing in that, that dimension? D do you guys understand that? Just trust me in ministry. You teach on healing, you'll see miracles. You teach on the presence of God, intimacy. His intimacy will come which is my favorite, because I feel like that's the climax to all things. That if you get the king, his kingdom comes with it, all the power flows. But there is real biblical principles on teaching everything else. And so anyway, we pray for ears open, man, legs growing out. I was just with, uh, this is a fun one, this was Todd. You guys know the guy with dreadlocks, Todd White? Yeah, <clears throat> evangelist um, to the core. We were in Israel, 
And, man, everybody's free game with that guy. He has no off switch at all in, in street evangelism. You just If you move and breathe, he's coming at you, <laughs> period, Whether, whatever you look like. And he gets, it, he's, he's got a Superman bubble around him at all times in evangelism. He gets away with some of the craziest stuff. I'm like, how is this happening right now? Like, I would get knocked out. Um, I'm remembering we were on a, one of our cruises. We do this annual event. It's a lot of fun. And, and he goes up in the gym on the cruise ship, and he walks up to, like, one of the most swelt dudes. I was like, okay, one of the most swelt up dudes on there smacks him in the chest. He's like, pop. He's like, I hope you got a lot of Jesus under all that muscle. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world, dude? Like, where's that in Bible school? Just smacks him dead in the chest. Hope you got Jesus under all that muscle. And uh, dude was angry. <laughs> and, uh, but he'll break him down. Right? He gets away with it. So we're just in Israel, and we're in a shoe store trying to get his wife some little some wet shoes. We were going through one of the excursions the next day, uh, tunnels or something, Hezekiah's tunnel. And uh, sure enough, he, he barely can't even speak the language. And the girl, uh, cashier, she says, how's your lower back? She's like, good. That, the word of knowledge wasn't even accurate on the, on the point. And he's still, it's like, which I've missed way more. But she goes, actually, my throat hurts. She's like, good. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> so he, he lays hands on her throat. <laughs> and uh, it was like the cheat code. Uh, lays hand on her throat. And nothing happened at first. He, he went again. And boom, she was like, Oh my goodness, like, how'd you do that? She thought he was working some type of magic or something. He was like, That's Jesus. He loves you. He just healed you. And, uh, and so the, the assistant, he might have been a manager. He was right there watching the whole thing, super skeptical, Muslim. And then when she got healed, he said, Who are you? How many of you know power will, will speak? The Bible says they will volunteer freely in the day of his power. Sometimes you don't need to debate a whole lot. Just let the Holy Ghost flow. You know, he steps on the scene and it just dominates things. And so he goes, who are, he, he was all ears then. Before that, he's like, these guys are nutcases, dreadlocks. Who's this other guy in the back? You know, and, uh, and then before you know it, he had the whole, he had the whole store locked down. Like nobody would do anything. And I'm like, I mean, people were walking in trying to get shoes. The workers wouldn't even help them. They're just glued. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, then his eyes change. I said, here he goes. When he starts nailing this guy, words of knowledge, the Muslim led him to the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So, um, yeah, praise Jesus. So good. But, um, I don't mean to go all there, but the thing is, the Holy Spirit's incredible, always pointing back to Jesus, and he's possessing a people in this hour. You know, and I know um, I feel it, the hunger in the room, but I myself, we just want to be in that current wave of what God's doing, all rooted in intimacy. I'm going to hit that at some point. I don't know how it's going to work, but, but I just love that. And um, we want to leave room for encounter. We'll leave plenty of room for that. Laying hands. How many of you know that laying on of hands is very biblical? All throughout, all through the New Testament. Uh, I won't sit there and quote scriptures to you, but more or less, you see the laying on of hands. It says, even Paul says, you know, about speaking the gifts that were imparted through the laying on of hands. Gifts of the Spirit are transferred, imparted. Baptism of the Holy Spirit occurs. Healing in bodies. Anoint the oil. You get the oil, the elders lay hands on the sick. And so we uh, see this transpire, and it's profound. I mean, people are going into crazy encounters with the Lord. Again, we serve a God of encounter. And um, I'm, I was reminded of this just now. I was in Houston. Oh, which, by the way, sorry, I'm kind of not dressed. <laughs> I normally do a little better for glory nights. But uh, uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, I don't care, hopefully. It doesn't stop me anointing. So I'm like living out of a luggage bag these days, man. I, I, was, I was doing the calculating it the other day, and I think I've been home three days in the last month. Yeah. But you know what's amazing? Jesus is everywhere. That's all I need. I've started to learn. I, I forget what hotel I'm in, what bed I'm at, where I'm at. And, but you wake up early, man, and he's right there with the fresh bread of life, presence of God, man. Me and Judah were just in Houston. We flew here this morning, and that's what I do. I'll go in my hotel room. I just want to encourage you guys. we got to really go for it, man. Infatuated lovers of Jesus. How you do it may look different than me, but he doesn't care. Just fall head over heels in love with Jesus. 
Let the religious say what they want while you just get caught up in love sickness with Jesus. He's everything. So we go in the room. I'm thinking, I don't care how it's set up. I just need a place to pray. That's all. That, that's the most valuable thing you can ever do every day of your life, be with Jesus. Everything else comes secondary. So I was like, sweet. They got a door shut. We can, we can you know, we got separate spots in the room. It's like a suite or something. So I took the couch bed, the ghetto springy in your back, you know, those that are like slanted and you're falling off type bed, but uh, he got the good cushiony one. Psh, selfish, man. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm totally teasing. <laughs> yeah, I'll introduce my family to a little bit. No, I chose that. But because um, I knew I wanted to get, or could get up early and be tucked away, you know, the Bible says, uh, go into your closet, shut the door behind you. And that what you do in secret, the Father will reward in public. And so I'm like sleeping sideways so my feet aren't hanging off all the way. So it's two nights in a row. But you get up and the sweet presence of Jesus is there. His voice is there. And that's all I need. And, um, but I, I'm hoping my parents will let me go to the house, do laundry tomorrow. <laughs> I've been living out of a luggage bag. But uh, before we get too far, um, do you mind standing? My lovely parents are here. My dad and mom. She'll stand. My dad won't. Yeah. Hey. Isn't she beautiful? And my dad's super handsome. And, uh, but so grateful. I love them dearly. They'll take time later to share with you that I was always an angel. A <laughs> perfect angel. <laughs> no, it was bad. But i um, so grateful because we don't, they don't always get to be in the meetings. But you all know. Do, do any of you know this was my hometown? Yeah. Oh, good. Yep. Yeah, love it. And uh, it's funny. I still, I, I mean, we recently moved to Atlanta, and it was a whole God thing. But I... Uh, They'll announce in, in conferences, like, yeah, man, we've got somebody here. You know, Brian's from Georgia. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I, it, it takes a while to register still. But I um, was so grateful um, for them. And my son Judah, if you want to stand, strapping young man. Yeah. And uh, my daughter Zoe would love to be here. So proud of her. She's holding the fort down with our little English bulldog. We got a little puppy recently. He's about 90% fat and 10% something else. And he's a sweetie, though. He's got the, it's funny, he's learned now, like when the doorbell rings, there's somebody coming to the door. He's still a puppy, but he's learned, like, you know, whether it's Amazon or like DoorDash, you know y'all order food to the house. If I can get out of cooking, DoorDash, Jesus. I'm teasing, but so he'll run, and he's got the flat, smushed in face. You ever seen English Bulldogs? And he's got the wide shoulder, and he'll just take off, run into the door. And we have blinds at the front door because it's full glass. And he'll smash into the blinds with his flat face <laughs> and close all the blinds. And then he gets frustrated because he can't see him anymore. He's like, rrr, rrr. <laughs> he's barking and stuff. I'm like, bullseye, bro. Get, get some wisdom, man. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, so... Um, but I'm excited. So, yeah, that's, that's more or less, you know, because some people <laughs> wonder. And uh, we love Jesus, want to make plenty of room. And, and, uh, and then, oh, yeah, I'll also announce um, tomorrow morning we have uh, Vision Breakfast. A lot of you that, that will be with us, um, I don't know, you know, my assistant set all that up, but you know if you're going to there, it's in the Heidelberg room. Um, I think it's up. I don't know what floor. Yeah, Heidelberg 10th. Oh, thank you so much. The 10th floor. It, I think it's the one we've used before. Um, it's beautiful. Overlooks the, the river and, and all that. So we'd love to have you. And then, oh, yeah, right after that, it's like 9 to 11. Or is that? No, is it? it okay. Oh, what's up, Kristen? Hey, how are you guys? Kayla. Um, it's 9 to whenever it is. And uh, <clears throat> I'm very administratively challenged. But at the end, we do a practical um, teaching to of the just go with the gospel. And it's awesome because it's tomorrow. And tomorrow's going to be beautiful, I found out. It got cold, man. Like, I don't know what y'all did. Or uh, First off, yeah, where's everybody? Is anybody from out of state? Raise your hand. Come on. Whoa, where's everybody from? Florida, Texas. Come on. Wait, where at? Dallas. Nice. I was just there. Houston. Wow. Were you there just in Houston? Did you beat me back? Oh, you weren't there. Okay. Oh, nice. Yep. So cool. Where else? Ohio. They brought the cold weather. Jennifer. 
Houston, come on, Texas. Dallas, love Dallas. Georgia, who's from Georgia? What part? Oh, nice, okay. Arkansas, come on, man. I was just in Houston. Oh, great, where are you from? Mississippi, nice, we're neighbors. Panama City, come on. Illinois, by Chicago, right? Sort of. Um, yep. Orlando, come on, Jesus, so good. Norway, come on, what part? Oslo? Oslo? Yeah, I got to tell you a funny story. Yep. We're at Netherlands. Come on, Jesus, man, rock them. How many of you know the hungry shall be filled? Yep. She's hungry. <laughs> she, she just got fed. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, where else? Anybody else? Oklahoma. Come on, Jesus. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, that's my crew back there. They're already somewhere in there. Love y'all. Where else in the back? Oh, she's like, take the baby out, I think. <laughs> but, um, wow, welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, so it's going to be two days of just Holy Ghost fun. We're, you know, tomorrow's a blast. We just hit the streets and, and um, oh, you just, <laughs> she's just like, yeah, come on. Um, but I got to tell you, I was in Norway, I think it was last year. Love it up there. They're so hungry. Were you there when I was there? Okay, yeah, it was powerful. And um, it was so awesome because my buddy Josh, do you remember Josh that was with me? Maybe. Anyway, he's the guy with me. It was so crazy because when you go with the Holy Spirit, you end up in some really just journeys, you know. So we're on a, a television network, some preaching some meetings, this, that, and the other. And we were near Oslo. And uh, somehow a leader took us out, we're going out to eat, and then we find out, like, anyway, I'll spare some of it, but we we end up on a pirate ship restaurant eating reindeer by this, like, river, and I was like, I was like, I was looking at Josh, I was like, is it just me, or what is happening right now? I was coming to Norway to preach the gospel, and we're eating reindeer in a pirate ship on a river in Norway. Like, man, the Lord will take in some crazy journeys. And uh, it's just funny, you end up in these wild things, but uh, our, that sticks out to me with Norway, but it's beautiful, amazing people, so full of hunger, um, but awesome. So yeah, welcome everybody, but tomorrow um, is supposed to be beautiful. Uh, I know it got cold, I think, today, and um, basically after the vision breakfast, a lot of fun. I'll talk, just cast vision, we'll eat breakfast together, it'll be a lot of fun. Those get out of hand, though, sometimes, you know, because we just always make room for the Holy Spirit. We just did one. <laughs> We just did one in uh, wherever we were. Yeah, yep. Yesenia, what's up? And uh, Holy Spirit blew in. So he just, I just love him. You know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit's like a wind. Sometimes you don't know where he came from or where he's going, but you sure sensed him. And also the Petries, got uh, Brian and Angela, you got to wave. They're amazing leaders, pastors, home of Louisiana. Um, so we'll just see what happens. But after that, we do practical instruction of just loving people, um, you know, praying for the sick, prophecy. And we make it super down to earth and fun is how it should be. You know, Jesus said, as you go, preach the gospel. So we'll tell you some fun places to go eat, shop, you women, you know. And, uh, and as you go, you know, you wouldn't believe how led by the Spirit you are. You know, Romans says, those that are led by the Spirit, those are the true sons of God. And uh, I'll never forget, we were in San Francisco doing one of these. And, and oh, before I get ahead of myself, tomorrow night we'll come back and do testimonies, and you're going to be blown away, for real. It's like every, it never fails. The craziest stuff happens. We prayed for impartation, stirring up of the gifts of prophecy. I would encourage you, if you've not been used in this way, just you know, step out and come join us. It's a lot of fun, and miracles happen. People's legs growing out crazy stuff. Um, and you just you love people as you go. But um, we were in San Francisco, and a uh, young Filipino man, uh, he, uh, did, he never really street witnessed and was nervous about it. So he felt, the, we're in San Francisco Bay in the summer, like hundreds of people anywhere you turn. It was just, you know, weekend, Saturday, just crazy, people everywhere. 
And so we just prayed, said, man, just be led, whatever. So he says, okay, Lord. He felt like the Lord told him just to go to one person that day, and that, that would be enough. And it is. You know, you just do what you, know, what you can do in the Lord. And um, so he, all these people, he starts going through, and he just feels led to go up to this one person. He starts talking to her, finds out it's his long-lost aunt. He never knew. <laughs> He's from the Philippines. We're in San Francisco. Crazy. Yeah. Talking about spirit-led, he goes to one person. Oh, my goodness. They start talking and find out connecting family members and all this stuff. Same day, same day, a lady from New Jersey runs up a prayer ministry. She's really powerful. She had come down from New Jersey. We're on the West Coast now. San Francisco has a prayer ministry online, so you don't see her, but you hear her voice. She prays and leads people all over the nation. Same thing, just being led by the spirit, going up, goes up to a person. Says, how can I pray for you? They start to pray, and then right when they pray, the lady opens her eyes. She goes, wait, are you so-and-so? She's like, yeah. She's like, I'm in your prayer ministry, <laughs> all the way in San Francisco. And then somebody came in right after somebody went into a stroke up in a restaurant, healings, miracles breaking out. It's crazy. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun to come back tomorrow night, share testimonies, and uh, just go for it again. Is that cool? And just let heaven do what he's going to do. But I want to encourage you guys to be hungry. That's the only... Um, you know, I would say qualifier, just be hungry and he'll touch you. You'll go back transformed, impartation, gifts, healing. Um, but before I forget, we have resources out there. Todd, do you have uh, your albums here? Wherever Todd's at? Oh, oh, cool. So Todd's got worship albums out there. Um, all our glory nights, is, it's me and Todd together. This guy will take you straight to the throne room. And I know him and Mia personally, they love Jesus dearly. How many of you know sometimes you have people that are gifted? Then you have others that walk with Jesus. And I love it both. You can have both. But they, and they are both. But they, they walk deeply with the Lord. And you want to get his stuff and just wear it out in the secret place. Also, a YouTube channel with tons of worship. It's Todd Shockley. You want to check that out. Um, we have a, uh, some stuff out there. I don't know what all's out there, to be honest with you. But I do know our latest book, Angelic Hosts, is here. And this is our first time publicly to ever announce it. I actually, this is my first time seeing it. <laughs> Just now I got it handed to me. I'm like, man, it looks good. <laughs> uh, so this was, this was actually birthed out of our, our school of the supernatural on the angelic realm right around the corner um, at our studio. It was downtown, 16th floor of the Capital One building. We used to overlook the river, a lot of you know. And um, I believe it'll really transform your life. We've been seeing some wild stuff with encounter experience and the Lord, you know. Um, anybody have a birthday today? Or this? No way. Daniela. Oh, wow. Do you have this one yet? Oh, good. Here, let me give it to you. Happy birthday to you. Come on. Happy birthday to you. You're very welcome. Birthday, dear Daniela. Happy birthday to you. And, uh, yay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how old are you? No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I would never do that. No, I'm teasing. Um, and then the, the second night, tomorrow night, I'll be glad to sign books. Sometimes people enjoy that and take pictures and things. It's just a memory of the event or, you know, totally some people aren't into it. It's, it's so funny. I, uh, my very first book I wrote years ago, um, may have been 2010-ish, First batch we released up in Virginia. I was preaching, signed them, this, that, and the other. Well, somehow, somebody got that first batch signed and would put it online, either eBay or Amazon or something. It was trying to sell it for 149 bucks. Our first book, Modern Day Mysticism, signed. And I'm like, so for the longest time, I would just go around saying, that's not us. <laughs> we have them here. Like, don't buy that one. So my buddy got frustrated. He, he reaches out to him directly uh, out of Chicago. He's awesome. Frankie. He's like, excuse me, um, why, why are you selling that book for so much and all this? And they were like, well, it's a rare copy, and it's, it's out of print. And, I'm, and he's like, I know the guy. It's not out of print, you know. So if you see any of those online, that's not us. But, um, but hopefully they'll be a blessing to you. How many of you know the Bible um, mentions the angelic realm over 270 times? A lot of times we kind of get a little bit religious we don't mean to but we're like watch out brother you know you want to point to this and even jesus needed the angelic realm twice in his earthly ministry that's recorded you know twice all over scripture peter was freed from jail uh, by an angel uh end of the book of acts they're about to wreck their ship the apostle paul on the isle of malta and he says fear not 
boys, an angel came to me in the night. He said, we're going to be fine. And they, you know, they, they grabbed their floaties, though, because they wrecked and had to float to the island. And um, it's pretty cool. This Kleenex is angel soft, so <laughs> that's a sign. People know I start crying sometimes, so I got Kleenexes up here. But um, I will say this. This morning, uh, early in prayer, one of the things I did see, though, which is interesting enough, is the first time I'm releasing the book, I saw the, in, like, silhouettes of angels coming through curtains into this place. And I think it's going to carry over into tomorrow morning, because if I remember that ballroom correctly, it's got curtains, that I, the ones like I saw. And um, so that says a lot to me. It, it typically speaks of fresh commissioning, you know, in destiny, a fresh sending, because the Bible says in Hebrews 1.14, aren't angels ministering spirits sent to assist those who are to inherit salvation? And every time you see an uh, amplified step into a call or commissioning and ascending, um, Judges 6 is a real, like, mascot verse for it. You see Gideon, remember, he was like a coward, and he was kind of hiding out from the Midianites, hanging on to what he got. Had a few protein bars he's trying to protect. And, and uh, it says an angel came under his father's tree, and there was a commissioning that began. To, he says that the Lord said, am I not sending you? And then he became like Braveheart overnight. You guys remember that? He's very bold. He says, you mighty man of valor. Well, the angelic comes and revelation really amps up in your life. So if you've been experiencing a bit of obscurity in hearing the voice of God, they're messengers sent from God. John 151 says, you know, angels ascend and descend upon Jesus. He's the Jacob, New Testament Jacob's ladder, basically. You guys remember Genesis 28? Jacob laid his head on a rock, and he says, Behold, there was a stairway that's top reached the heavens, meaning it was planted here. And it says he saw angels of God ascending and descending, meaning their function is here. They're sent to assist those who are to inherit salvation. Holy Spirit commissions them all. And um, anyway, revelation amps up, and the supernatural and assistance break through like you wouldn't believe. Pull the Bethesda healing, the, the angel stirring the waters. When they get involved, the supernatural really amps up. So, for instance, if you've been trying to make your ship, your sail ship of destiny go, when they come with the Holy Spirit, the wind hits the sail a lot harder. Does that make sense? And the ship will just take off. Whereas before, it's like, man, I was doing the same stuff. It's just the supernatural emphasis is there. Um, another thing, uh, real quick, one of the things I saw this morning that made sense to me um, when he hit Abba Father, you could feel it shift, and then to expound, on, and then Brett uh, expounded on it, the, the spirit of adoption. You could just feel it, and that's never happened, honestly, in the glory nights. And this morning, I was reminded I saw the scene of, I know this sounds funny, but you guys know the prophetic can come symbolic at times, and, and, uh, but I, I literally, I was in prayer, and I, I got taken into it where I saw the scene of uh, Humpty Dumpty, you know, the egg. And if I'm honest, I didn't remember the story or how it worked, but I could tell it was a situation that wasn't right connected to Humpty Dumpty. I, I believe, um, so I screenshotted the lyrics because I didn't know what it was. And I believe the, the enemy is trying to portray the story of Humpty Dumpty to, to many of you, and I'll read it and it'll make sense. And uh, it says this. It says, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. It's like, what? Man, we went to glory nights. Dude was talking about Humpty Dumpty. Man, heresy. <laughs> heresy. <laughs> I knew this guy was a false prophet. <laughs> I'm teasing. No, but um, the Lord's fun sometimes. But, you know, if you, you know, you, you see in the Bible, though, he really speaks in unique, unique ways in the prophetic. Uh, Acts chapter 10 Peter's on a rooftop. A sheet comes down with unclean animals. I mean, lots of bacon was in there. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, rise and eat. We were just in Israel, and we tried to get bacon at every turn. It was nowhere to be found. And Todd's like, he's, he's agitating our, our trip um, coordinator because she was Jewish. She, would, she wouldn't eat it, bacon for nothing. He's like, but... How? Like what? Because it was funny that she was a Messianic Jew, but still adhered to like the law. He's like, you can't. There's all 613. You broke one of them. Let's eat bacon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> it was awesome. They're going back and forth. <laughs> so, uh, so Peter, Peter, the spokesman on the day of Pentecost, right? Acts 2. If anybody knew a little something about the voice of God. <laughs> y'all know y'all want some bacon now, though. You know what I'm saying? It is divine. They, they may have some tomorrow morning. Um, Pe uh, Peter, uh, spokesman on the day of Pentecost, right? <laughs> this is Acts chapter 2. I mean, Joel 2 prophesied this thing. It goes all the way. <laughs> More, Lord. <laughs> and uh, Acts 2. <laughs> it's going to start getting out of hand, I'm telling you. It'll start hitting. Watch out. Like joy grenades. Yeah. More, Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were not drunk as you suppose. That's what he said on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> how do you know that one of the main fruits of the Holy Spirit is joy? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Thank God. What if one of the main fruits was depression or something? <laughs> that, would, that would be a catastrophe. Oh, man, that'd be bad. <laughs> in, in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Pleasures forevermore. I was just reading it on the plane in Ephesians 5. Paul, Paul says, don't be drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Super awesome. So, um, yeah, Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Heresy. Uh, but, yeah, so, so Peter, <laughs> you know, Peter should know a thing or two and goes into a vision. Uh, a sheet comes out. <laughs> and uh, three times, bacon, all that. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it just starts popping, man. Pop, pop, pop. Holy Spirit takes these jaw grenades. So, more Holy Spirit. Yeah, I just encourage you to be hungry. Yeah. So, um, you know, Peter, he, he uh, you know, you'd think he would know a thing or two, and so, but he comes out of the vision, and he, it's, the Bible says he pondered as to what the vision might have meant. Walked with Jesus all three years of ministry. Spokesman on the day of Pentecost, and he, he didn't even know what the vision meant. It was symbolic. So, God, you know, he speaks in these ways. And so I, I could see uh, this Humpty Dumpty scene. And, and let me read you the lyrics because I don't know what it was. It says, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. And so I know that I know there's some people in here, you know, in the world's eyes or however people want to title it. You may have had a fall 
or something like this, and the enemy's got you thinking you can't be put back together again. I'm telling you right now that the Lord has no Humpty Dumpties in his kingdom. Yeah. He does not know what that is. And, and we want to pray for that, too. And I think that's that whole Abba Father thing, the adoption. You know, um, I could see it in the scene in prayer that the devil's a liar completely. And you're going to be fully put back together by the anointing, the spirit of the Lord and truth. You know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And I feel like you're, you're coming into windows where you start to get free and the enemy lies again. And you feel like I can't be put back together again. Or you fell or whatever. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible says. There's therefore now no condemnation. We're going to pray. And, and uh, you need to know that God doesn't even get the term Humpty. He doesn't have those in his kingdom. There is nothing unfixable in his eyes. You get that? Isn't that awesome? There's no thing the blood of Jesus can't repair fully. Yeah. Thank God. So I don't care how far you fell, how often you have fallen, how cracked you think you feel. The blood of Jesus and the glory of God is going to put you back together completely. It's going to be awesome. So uh, isn't that good? Uh, okay, and one last thing from a dream, and then we'll jump back in prayer. Is that okay? Um, so, and then I woke up this morning out of a dream where I saw these three ones that, that I'll, I'll see from time to time. I haven't seen it in a while, but basically when I see the three ones, one, 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 it's typically Jeremiah one eleven. I'll read it to you. Um, how many of you, you ever see one, one, one quite a bit near yeah, eleven, eleven, and things like this? Not to super spiritualize that all the time, but quite often the Lord can use these things, you know. These, man, you see the prophets really start to hone in on the prophetic and the details that God uses in numbers. If you really look at it, the flood happened on the second month, 17th day. Daniel 10, it says he was by the bank of the Nile, first month, 24th day. Uh, Ezekiel, you know, on and on. Um, Isaiah, in the year Uzziah died. You know, he gets caught up, the train of his robe filled his temple. And so you'll see the specifics and dates, times, and seasons, and reasons, and where they're at. And, and God will do this, but you don't have to turn there. I'll read it to you. Uh, Jeremiah 111 is really awesome. It says, and the, Jeremiah was a seer prophet. He would see things, prophetic um, pictures, visions. This is some of the stuff we'll go over tomorrow in the prophetic that will help flow out on the streets. There's, there's two main rivers that flow out of it, but anyway. Uh, Jeremiah one eleven says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. This is Jeremiah. The Lord said to him, You've seen well, for I'm watching over my word to perform it. And when I see this, of course, it's the word of God. It never returns void. But when I see it by revelation, it makes it a now accessible word. Does that make sense? The word of God never returns void. Its principles never change. But when the Lord breathes on it by the Spirit into now, the unction of the Spirit and the anointing is there to, to make it accessible. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. So Jeremiah one eleven is basically the Lord watching over his promises and his word now to perform them. You know, you read it quickly, you go, okay, cool. But it's a big, big thing. And I, and I know because I've seen this happen in these type meetings where everything changes. Sometimes, how many of you know promises of God can sometimes tarry for quite a bit? I can't stand those like promises, but they're, they're real. You know, it's biblical too. Habakkuk says, though my promise may tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come to pass. Abraham waited forever for Isaac, and that's God too. You'll have those seasons. But when he highlights this, it's a quick fulfillment because almonds, they're, they're some of the first things to sprout quickly. You know, the almond branch, the, the fruit of the almond. And um, so whatever that looks like in our lives, I just know I was, saw the three ones coming out of a dream this morning. We want to pray. And let the Holy Spirit do what he's going to do with that promises. I feel like there's been delayed him up promises over our lives. And the Holy Spirit's going to breathe on them and bust them wide open. And I love when he does that. A scriptural kind of precedent for it that I love to point out with this is Elisha. Um, you see this, this wealthy woman would made a place for him to stay. And we all know the story. I think it's 2 Kings. And every time he'd come through town, she would take care of him. Had him all set up. And uh, 
So after a while, he, he comes through and he says, man, I wonder, like she's doing all this for her, Gehazi, his assistant. He said, go ask her, what can we do for her? This is a, a prophet, you know, prophetic. Sometimes all it takes, I love this about God, is a prophetic unction and anointing, like I'm sharing with you now, just hear it in a dream. And then we just cross paths together. That's it. Isn't that awesome? Thank God we don't have to, like, pass all these. I mean, you do pass tests in character and in loving the Lord, but I'm saying qualify. Like, a lot of times, you know, we're just, you feel like you don't match up, and, and that's not what he's looking for. He's looking for hunger, purity, and just loving him well. So he says, Gehazi, go ask her what she wants. Does she need a prophet, you know, word with the government, some favor, something like that? And she's like, no, nope, I don't even, I'm not even of those people. We're of our own people. Don't need any connection with the government. It, it appears that he's even off in the prophetic, one of the most hard-hitting prophets of the day. She says, my husband's old. We've wanted a child forever. It was a promise hemmed up forever that they wanted fulfilled. And Elisha's like, that's it? He says, it'll be done. You'll, you'll have a, child, a son this time next year. Isn't that awesome? Sometimes all it takes is the obedience to the voice of God, walking out destiny, loving Jesus, and then you cross the prophetic anointing that hears a word. I, I don't share these if I don't hear them, but the, the Jeremiah 111, and it brings this emphasis of the Spirit. It's like a, a match gets struck in, a, in an atmosphere of gasoline, and it lights and um, sure enough, she became pregnant. You all remember that story? Yep, she bore a son the next year. That's all it took. It's like she didn't do anything special other than that. And, um, and so, But I, I backed up a little bit while I was in prayer earlier, and, and I want to read this because I want to pray it over you as well. I've never quite seen it like this before, but it, it, if you look back, Jeremiah's in the commission first. He's getting commissioned as a prophet. Then he says, what do you see? But it says this, he says, see, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Very next verse, he asked Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an almond branch. So I felt that connected tonight too. We're going to pray, but the, that ability of plucking up and rooting out to this, there's obstacles I feel that have been there. Um, even legal right now, I'm, I'm sensing there's legal ramifications that have been hemmed up, connected to finances and, and family things. There's something with legal stuff that's hemmed up. I can feel it right now. And how many of you know the Bible, is, Jesus says, speak to the mountain, and it can be cast into the sea. Well, Jeremiah, he, can, he now, he says, I, he put the word of the Lord in your mouth, and you're, you're, you can command and speak things to pluck up and be uprooted and to build and to plant. And so we're going to believe the obstacles, these things that have hemmed up these promises, because I feel like there's, there's obstacles blocking some of these promises. Speak to them. The Bible says, decree a thing that it may be established, that they be removed, and then also speak the building and planting of the promise of God to land. Does that make sense? And just let it land where, where it does. So um, it was already nine. Yeah, so if you want to stand real quick, we'll just kind of get back in the presence and see, see where we end up. <clears throat> Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Todd, if you want to come. Yeah, I believe there's going to be fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the Bible, when it, the occurrences of being filled with the Spirit uh, happen, there's a continuation of it. You know, we're to keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. You see it in Acts chapter 2, then another outpouring in Acts 4, and there's an increase of authority and blessing. And so I um, just want to encourage you guys. Some of you say, well, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost back in 1988 you know, or whatever to be hungry and pray for a fresh infilling. I know I want it, you know. We're going to come through and love to lay hands on all of you and just pray for a fresh baptism. And, and if you're just hungry and you look to him, you're... Uh, susceptible I can tell you that so just begin to look to the Lord I want to dim the light some I'm going to pray first on Jeremiah 11 then we just want to see where the Holy Spirit leads
begin to worship the Lord, begin to see Jesus. The Bible says, I set the Lord always before me. Come, Lord Jesus. Be filled, be filled, be 